Hey everybody, it's Cynthia. Thank you so much for joining me today. The last time that I made a video, I was trying to show how to create a, uh, a journal cover by using a cereal box. It's a very simple method. I showed you that I take a A4, I believe is the size of the American copy paper. I believe that's eight and a half by 11. And um, so that I get the height and this, the material is more than the pasteboard, but you can go back and see my last video and see how I actually made that. I don't measure anything. Uh, so I have the front and the back, and I have it glued in between now, two pieces of fabric, and I have sewn. I started using a new sewing machine because mine is in storage still in one state and I am in the process of moving to another state. And the new sew machine, I didn't like how close this zig, uh, zigzag stitch was, so I moved it out to here. I also liked this, the fact that I usually like a darker thread when I'm sewing. I like that it shows, it's part of making a junk journal, but the bobbin thread was white and I just like this, so I made this my outside cover. And the inside cover, I think you can see that there's red here. There's what looks like a big red diamond. There's a big red splotch. That's all gonna go away. I know we've glued it. I know we've sewn it and it looks like we're finished, but when we come in and we put pockets down the sides of the journal, the insides of the journal, all of this is going to disappear and fade into the background. So when we talk about making junk journals, they truly are junk journals and they truly are easy to make and it's lots of fun. And so just simply using a cereal box is a, a neat, easy way to create either a journal, a junk journal or a traveler's notebook, that kind of thing. I have a little template that says, wide is my spine? And I have written top and bottom so that I get that correct here and I know the, the width apart because I'm also gonna use the same template in my signatures when I put in my three signatures in just a moment. I am gonna hand sew those in. It's a little te tedious to watch. Um, it's a little tedious for me to do. This is not the funnest part for me. I like doing all the decorating of the inside pieces. That's the part of the journal I love, but this is part of the process. So there will be three signatures. This will be sewn in one, two, three pamphlet stitch there. Then the second one will come up, come in and, and fit right along here and then the third one in the front will go in here. Okay, so to give you an idea there of what I'm doing, and the template is just, all I've done is I've come down not quite an inch from the top, I've gone up not quite an inch from the bottom, and I can, you can't see that on film, but I can feel where the bottom of that spine is. I used a pokey tool or an awl to make holes at each place, then I use my ink pen to draw, and now I've used the awl or the pokey tool to make the holes into the journal cover itself. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew that now just to give you an idea of how that's going to look. And this is the easiest process of creating a journal. You do need some kind of paper clips, at least I do. Um, I really like the kind that cut clamp, but do you think I could find a clamping uh, Paperclip? No, not for love nor money this morning could I find, and I know I have them in my stash. I used them recently. Um, but I just wanna make sure those papers are together here in the center. And when I first began making journals, I used dental floss to sew in my signatures. It's the only kind of thread that I knew I had in my home that would probably work, and I've used that quite a bit. The only caution that I have for you on that, if you use the wax kind, make sure you tie um, three or four knots into, into this when I show you where the knots are, not just one or two, but tie three or four. You wanna make sure that they don't come loose because of that wax makes them slippery and that can happen. So what I am using now is I ordered a box of carpet. Let's see if I'm in ordered a bag of carpet uh, repair kit. Uh, not a bag, but a kit. And there are six spools of thread, all varying colors inside. And I ordered some nice thick needles. So that's what I'm using. 
And the way I know how much to use is I just simply take that off the spool and count up one, two, and three. I have just a little bit more than that to make sure. I always start in the center. And before I can start in the center, I have to have holes in the center as well. So using, again, top and bottom, you see right here what I've done, top and bottom. I wanna line it up and I'm just simply gonna go in. Give me a second, please. I'm sorry while I reach back for my pokey tool. My awl is in North Carolina, packed up. So I'm using a really big needle, upholstery needle, just to make that here. And I wanna go through the center And I think you can see the needle coming out the other side. I'm gonna zhuzh that around just a little bit. Again, keeping these papers intact with the paper clips. Let me, let me put this back in place. I have my first hole here. I wanna come right into the center of the signature and make my middle hole. If I had an awl, there would be a nice thick handle on this side and it wouldn't be chapping me in the hand as I'm trying to stick it through. But I just simply wanna show you the process so that we can go ahead and begin creating. Now you can see there are two holes in the center of my signature. Again, making sure I'm staying in line. I could use an ink pen for this as well. I just don't like to see that ink pen mark and I typically can't disguise that. Others may do that easily. You might do that with yours but I'm just simply gonna use the needle itself. And there are either 10 or 11 pieces of paper in my signatures. Okay, so I need to move that out of the way. I can pick up my thread now. I'm gonna go in the center hole. And so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to go into the first center hole there because that's where my signature is going to begin. Okay, go up to the top one. I'm gonna make sure I don't pull that all the way through. Go in the back. Make sure I'm finding the hole there that I have made for myself. And here we go. And I don't know if you saw what I did, but. I moved that up because my hole goes through the center and I want it to be a little bit closed so that I know what's going on there. Okay, so now I found that. I want to hold on to this piece. I'm going to go back all the way down. I'm going to go on this side. And out that bottom hole. But then what I wanna do is I wanna come back in the middle hole. Remember I went out the middle hole to begin with. And I'm gonna pull this thread now over to this direction. Come into that middle hole. I don't want to go through the thread that I went out with. Aha, and I've done that well, so now you can see that there is a thread on the left-hand side and a thread on the right-hand side. I'm gonna tie my knot over top of this middle thread because I don't want the, the knot to pull back through. And doing that will secure this signature. And I'm simply going to pick the book up now and check to make sure I have it in alignment. One, two, and three cords here. Okay, am I even in the screen? I can't see a thing. Okay. I'm still taping, hold on, there's something else on. There we go, okay. So I think I still taped and got all that. Something else, uh, some kind of message came up on my um, picture. Sorry for that interruption. But now you can see, and it looks like it's nice and it's taut. I want to make sure it is taut enough. Pull it again. I'm going to tie the knot on. I'm actually going to make these strings a little bit shorter so I can manage them easier. Again, making sure one string is on the left, one string is on the right. 
of the long string that goes from top to bottom. And I'm going to tie two or three knots. Because I do want to make sure that even in transit or over time, this knot holds and none of the signature comes loose. Now, what you can do is you can tie this in a bow, cut it off shorter, you can put beads or dangles of some kind on there, but this gives us our first signature and I'm just gonna leave them because I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet. But here's the first signature. And you see that signature number two is gonna line up right there in the middle. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and try for that one. Bye. And I'll talk to you about the papers that I used and show you that here in just a second too. But we're gonna clip these pages down in place again so that they're not moving as we are placing the hole in the signatures. And while I am not talking because I'm thinking. Let me try to think of something here. Let me uh, begin by saying, I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. I hope everybody's ready for the new year. And I just simply want to go three times the height of this, two and three. That gives me enough thread for sewing my signature into my journal. Reaching back for that good hefty needle. And I will also want to use top and bottom. Make sure that's aligned properly. Before I showed you that I just went in and made the holes, this time I think I'm going to use an ink pen just to show you the difference. One, two, and three for the placement. That way I can move it out of the way. And if I can find my pokey tool, hello, I will make the holes. Let's go in. I wanna... There are people out there, if you check Gail Augustinelli's channel, and she goes by her name, G-A-Y-L-E, Augustinelli, A-G-O-S-T-N-E-L-L-I. I may have slaughtered her last name, but that will be close on YouTube and she goes by her first and last name on her YouTube channel. Uh, she can name a seller that makes a little device where you can actually put your signature in and your book cover when you're doing that so that it keeps it in the V shape that we're trying to go for. And I'm gonna jiggle that just a little bit because I don't have an awe. I'll make sure my hole is big enough. And here's my third hole. Okay. You can buy an awl at Walmart. You can buy an awl on Amazon. Hobby Lobby carries small little awls back in their... Um, I think it's in their sewing department is where they have their awls. Um, but they ha do have a handle on them, and I have a couple. I just don't have one here with me in Tennessee. Again, I'm starting in the center. The second signature will go into the middle hole in the middle part of that signature. Again, I'm going to go up here and find my paper holes signature holes to go into and then pulling this up so you can see what's going on yeah okay come all the way down to the bottom hole and go through and out the bottom hole of your I probably look like a spastic whale trying to do this. I know that there are better ways, and I've seen people who just make this look so simple, and it is simple. 
I just simply am not coordinated enough to get it <laughs> and make it look so simple. So forgive me for that. Okay, now I have string on the left. I want to come back up that middle hole. Making sure I don't go into that thread from the first part. And let's see what I have here. I want to make sure I have string on both sides of that long center string. Okay, and I do. Let's make sure I went through the center. One, two, three. The center meaning this one, because this is the center signature. I have, it's taut. I'm on either side of the long piece of thread you can see there. So now I'm going to tie it. And I don't usually, I see people tie one knot. Sometimes I see people tie two. I typically tie three or four. I'm just afraid that string somehow is gonna come uh, undone. And I wanna make sure that that is not done undone over time. So there. And again, just cutting a little of that off. And we're ready to put in the third signature. So look. I mean, it's coming, look how this is coming together. Here we have our first, ah, oh, it's almost a book, look. It's taking the shape, it's um, filling out, you're feeling how it's the heft of it. You've got the first signature here, and you can see now there is a, uh -huh, a second signature in there. And then we're gonna flip it on over because we're gonna add the third signature into our book. <clears throat> And I will show you how I picked my papers for this journal, and I never pick them the same way twice. Um, it depends on a theme. If I want a theme, if I'm doing winter, summer, spring, fall. This one, someone's told me that they, this is actually, this journal is not going to be for sale. This journal is for a friend. Um, as I was moving, two of my friends went out to eat with me. And um, I gave one of them a journal because I know she's a crafter and I really thought she would like it. And the third friend said, wow, I want a journal too. And I said, oh, really? Because if I could get everybody in the world to loving journals and writing in journals, you know, a journal doesn't have to be used for daily writing. A journal can simply be used for, um, it could be used for drawing, put pictures in it. Um, you could do... Uh, it could be your to-do list for the day as you sit down each night thinking about what you need to get accomplished for the next day. Uh, it can be your to-do list. Um, so it doesn't have to be the old thing that we used to do in school where we would have journal entries and have students write for five minutes free writing, trying to get them to think of what to do. I don't know how many people I've heard say this is so difficult. How many times have I myself sat down to do the same thing? Now, I do keep a journal. Um, I keep a journal with my devotions. Uh, it's a prayer journal. If I've learned something, I've read something that I want to write down, then I will typically daily write in my journal. So I am a journaler from way back. And as soon as I saw these first journals, um, after my mom died, my dad's health went downhill very quickly. And with the first just sitting around kind of keeping an eye on him, trying to occupy my mind, I found Wendy, Wendy Connors Beckett and Mrs. Coggs. Mrs. Coggs was showing a traveler's notebook that she made for one, two, three. Just re-emphasizing that's how I did that. And of course, you can always play this back, any part of it, forward yourself on through it. Mrs. Cox has made Wendy a beautiful canvas butterfly traveler's journal, and it was Midori style. And as soon as I saw it, um, I was enthralled and I thought, I can do this. I had a sewing machine, but I never wanted to be a sewer. Um, I'm not a seamstress. I think I made um, a few things back in middle school, junior high school years in the eighth grade when I was taking a sewing class. 
and I just turned that whole thing upside down and I have no idea which was top and which was bottom. Let's see if I can match up my holes. Yeah, they're good. So we go all the way, we go out the middle. We're gonna go up to the top, come back in. And I think I made an apron, and I may have made a top, but that's all I've ever done. And then in high school, um, all of these spangles on our jeans and all kinds of embroidery, so I figured out how, how to do some of that. And that's probably all I've used my machine for my entire life, except for hemming clothes. I am a short little girl. Um, I stand five feet tall, no inches, no centimeters, just five. <laughs> and um, so every pair of jeans or pants that I've ever purchased, I don't care um, if I ordered petite, it didn't matter, my, my pants have to be hemmed. So again, I, before I start tying, I wanna make sure that I have that taut there on the outside. I do, I'm in the right holes here, everything looks good. I have my thread through. I have one thread on the left, one thread on the right, over this long piece of thread that goes from top to bottom. And now I'm just simply gonna tie, if I can get my fingers to work, a few knots. And we have a journal that we can start working on now. And it's simple. And the Midori, when I said Midori style, um, Mrs. Coggs had made an art, not an art journal, a travel journal. The size of that is just about half the width of, the, of a regular size journal when you talk about travel journals. But she had made that Midori style and I thought, oh, I can do that. And Midori is simply using elastic in this place and there's no sewing involved at all. You simply come in here and you put eyelets in. I can show that in one video. Put eyelets in and run elastic and run that through there. And I'm telling you, it is simple and easy and that's how I made my first journal. And there began my journal. Look at this, we have a journal now that we can add something to the top and the bottom, the outside, the inside, pockets. We have three signatures full of old papers and new papers and papers we're gonna make look old and we're ready to go. How fun was that? How easy was that? And it is it is just that easy. It's a little tedious for me. It's not the, the most fun part of journal creating, but this gives us then what, our canvas for going in and creating. And I'll see you hopefully in the next video. Have a great day, thanks.